Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Welcome back to your uh, final Conf 335 tutorial. Uh, just before we get started, I want to say that it's been a pleasure to, uh, to have been your, your TA during this uh, summer semester. Uh, I hope um, I was uh, useful uh, and, and helpful in, uh, in uh, sort of any, any shape or form or in, in any sort of uh, way that I could. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. So, um, so let's get started. Um, what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to uh, continue our, our, our study of uh, Turing machines. And then we're going to look at uh, Turing machines, uh, not only as uh, language acceptors, but also as um, uh, uh, machines that can compute functions and return uh, a certain output given an input. Okay. So uh, to continue our discussion on, on Turing machines, uh, we have the following a very lengthy definition, which I'm going to sort of uh, resume in, in uh, one or two lines. So uh, given a Turing machine M uh, with the, the seven tuple uh, composition, the instantaneous uh, description of a Turing machine M is uh, in a way the description of the state of that Turing machine at a particular time, uh, at a particular instance of its computation. So what I mean by that is, for example, let's say you have uh, your input tape here. Uh, your input tape has uh, some symbols, A1, uh, A2, to AK, uh, and uh, AK plus one, all the way to a n okay and now suppose that uh, you're in state q okay you're in state q and you've read all of these symbols so far you've read all of those symbols so far and now your q is pointing here so you're at the state pointing at uh, that symbol of the input tape okay then we say that the uh, instantaneous so, or the ID, the instantaneous description of your Turing machine at that moment is going to be all of the symbols that you read uh, already. So A1 to AK. And then your state Q. Okay, and followed by uh, all of the symbols that are left to read. Okay, so all of the symbols that are left to read. So in other words, uh, starting at your pointer and going all the way to the end uh, until there are essentially a, a bunch of blanks after that. Okay, so this is the instantaneous description of your Turing machine at a particular instant. Okay, and why is this useful? This is useful because it, it allows you to uh, completely describe a transition from one state to another. So, for example, let's say I'm at uh, state Q at uh, time, uh, let's say one. Okay, so at a particular time, I'm at state Q, and this is my ID. Okay, suppose this is my ID. That's my description of the machine at that particular time, and I have a transition that looks like if you're in Q, and you read the symbol, say this. So this is a symbol A sub K plus one. If you read the symbol A sub k plus one, then you're going to replace it with, uh, let's say b sub k plus one, and then you're going to go to the right, okay? So you can actually describe uh, this transition using your ID, your instantaneous description, as the following. So uh, you're, you're currently uh, in, in this kind of configuration, you've already seen a1 to a k, you're at Q and now you're about to read AK plus one. Once you've read AK plus one, you're going to replace that AK plus one by B sub K plus one, and you're going to move uh, to the right. And once you move to the right, you're going to be in a new state P, okay? In a new state P. And then after that, you're going to have the symbols AK plus two to uh, AN. Okay, and before that you have A1, to AK, this is the symbol that got written, and then 
this is what you have left to read. Okay, so this is essentially a a transition from one instantaneous description description to another. Okay, and uh, this becomes very handy when we want to describe what the language accepted by a Turing machine is. Okay, so suppose you have the following mach Turing machine M with the seven tuple configuration. Then we say that the language accepted by M, uh, L of M, is the set of all strings in sigma plus. So remember, um, you don't consider Turing machines M such that the empty string is an, is an L of M. Okay, so we're just assuming for uh, this definition that the empty string is not accepted. Um, so all of the strings that are accepted by M are the ones where you start in your initial state Q0 and you have W to read and then using uh, one or more, so zero or more instantaneous uh, descriptions or, or transitions. So this is zero or more uh, transitions using the, the sort of instantaneous uh, description transition you get to uh, a new instantaneous transition, a new, uh, sorry, an instantaneous description, a new ID, where uh, you're en you end up in a final state. On the left, you have some strings, X1, you have some string X1, and on your right, you have some string X2, okay? So all of the strings where you start in Q0, so you start in Q0 and you have your string W, and then there exists a computation where you can transition to a state uh, QF, so state QF that has uh, X2 uh, on the right of the pointer and X1 on the left of the pointer. All such strings uh, W belong to the language accepted by M uh, L of M. Okay, so that's how you would define a a language accepted by by a Turing machine. Formula. Okay. So now, uh, just to get a, a better handle of instantaneous descriptions, let's do sort of a, a quick run through uh, what the the ID looks like for the language that ex the the machine that accepts A and B N. So you have the following Turing machine M, uh, which we've already seen and you've seen in the lecture uh, that accepts. A and B N for N greater than zero. And we want a, a, um, a sample run or a, a run of the uh, instantaneous descriptions starting at your initial state and going all the way to your final state. Okay. So essentially, how do you kind of map each transition here to an ID here? Okay. So whenever you start with an input string W, so in this case, your input string W is A2, B2. Uh, you say that you start at your initial state and at the right of your initial state, you have uh, A2, B2, okay? Then you essentially just use the uh, transitions that are given to you by the diagram to go from one ID to another, okay? So now you're in Q, so you're in Q0 and you have A2, B2 at the right. So it tells you that if you're in Q0, and you see an A, then you write an X, and you move your pointer to the right to go to Q1. So that means that this A here is going to become an X, that A, that A is going to become an X, and now your Q0 is going to move here, and it's going to be a state, a new state Q1. So that's what's, ha that's what's happened here. Q1 is the new uh, state in which you're in, on the left of it, there's X. That's what you have read and written so far. And then on the right, A, B, B, that's what's left to read uh, and, and write, okay? And so then you just, you just essentially repeat the same process. I'm not going to go through uh, all of it, but for instance, again, now you're in Q1 and you're going to read an A. So what transition describes that? Well, you're in Q1 and you're going to read an A. So what you do then is you replace that A with an A and you go to the right, but you stay in Q1. So you're going to move your Q1 here 
and you're going to leave that A as is. So that's why the next ID is over here. Okay. And then you essentially follow the, the, the same procedure. So now you're going to tick off a B with a Y uh, and your, your, your Q2. So let me actually do this one because this is the first one you go to the left. So you're in Q1 now, you're in Q1 and you're seeing a B. So you're in Q1, you see a B, you replace that B with a Y. And now you go to the left, now being in the state Q2. So you move your Q1 uh, to the left of A, and now that new state is going to be Q2. So that new state is Q2, and to the left you have X, and to the right you have A, Y, B. Okay. And then, so, so now I'm going to say you keep, you keep this going here, you essentially use the same process. And now let's say you're all the way, you, you stricken off, uh, the, the, the both X's and both Y's. Okay, so now you have uh, X, X, Y, Y, and you're at the point that you're at Q0. And instead of seeing an A or a B, you have, uh, you're seeing a Y, okay? So when that happens, once you're in, so now I'm talking about this ID here. Once you're in Q0 and you see a Y, then you go to the right and you replace that Y with another Y. So you move, you move your Q0 to the right, and that makes you go into state Q3. So that's why now you're in state Q3. And the Y that you just saw uh, gets replaced by a Y, so essentially there's no change. And then again, you use this loop to go to stay in Q3, but then go to the right of Y. So now you're, you've essentially read all of your, uh, your X square, Y square, and now your Q, your Q3 is going to see a blank. So that's when, that's when uh, you're going to go from Q3 to Q4 by, um, by not changing the blank and going back to the left, okay? So now this is, this is your final state. You have some strings on the left, X1, and some strings on the right, X2. So this is a reason why uh, according to this definition here, according to this definition here, that's why uh, A2, B2 uh, is accepted because you can start in Q0 and then go to a final state, QF, where you have some strings on, a string on the left and a string on the right of your final state, QF. Okay, so that was a demonstration of what the uh, instantaneous description looks like. Now let's look at an actual Turing machine and try to determine what strings given uh, this Turing machine are accepted by it. So we have the following Turing machine. Um, let, let's, let's, let's look at each uh, option. Okay. So you, uh, you always start in Q0, right? And in this case, you're going to read AABA. So uh, what's nice about Turing machines, about standard Turing machines, is that they're deterministic. So there's always a single choice of where to go to. So in Q0, if you see an A, you can only go to Q1, okay? So let me do this with, with an ID, actually. You're in Q0, uh, you see A, A, B, A. Then you can transition to uh, Q1, and you, you're, you're, you're replacing the A that you're seeing with an A and you're going to the right, you're going to the right. And now what's left to read is A, B, A. But now once you're in Q1, once you're in Q1, there are only two possible transitions you can make. You can either see a blank and go to the right, or you can see a B and go to the right. But here, uh, you, you have an A on the next, on, on your pointer, on your current pointer. So that means there is no possible move to go to, so your Turing machine is going to uh, halt. Okay, so this one is not going to be accepted. Uh, a, similar, a similar sort of reasoning for C. For C, uh, now your second symbol and the, the sort of the second to the fourth symbols are going to be B. So you're going to go from Q0 to Q1, then you're going to read some Bs. But at the end, once you're finished reading all your Bs, you still have an A. And you're also going to be stuck because once you, you see an A and you're in Q1, 
you can't use this transition and you can't use this transition. Okay, so that's why this guy is not going to be accepted. Uh, one that will be accepted if you start with A is going to be if you start with A and then you have a bunch of Bs and nothing else. So here we can clearly see that's accepted because you're in, you start at Q0, you read an A, you go to the right and you place that A with an A. Then you're in Q1, you see a bunch of Bs and you stay in Q1. So once you're finished seeing all your, your Bs, now you're here and you're reading a blank. So once you read that blank, you're going to replace it with a blank and go to the right. So essentially what, what's happened is you started at Q0, you had AAB, and then you moved uh, your, your, your pointer to a final state, uh, in this case, uh, Q5, Q5, and Q5 on the left is going to have A, B, B, a blank, right? Because um, once you're done reading all the Bs and you're here, you see a blank and you move to the right, okay? So you see a blank and there's going to be a blank on the right. So you can consider this, this, this as a string, this is a string and this is a final state. So according to the definition of the, the strings accepted by M, this guy is going to be accepted as well. The last one here, which is B, is essentially the same idea, but now you start with Bs and then end with A's. So if you start with B, instead of going from Q0 to Q1, you have to go to Q4. Then you read a bunch of Bs and you stay in Q4, right? So you read a bunch of Bs, you stay in Q4, but you're moving your pointer to the right. And then finally, uh, once you're at the A, you read that A and you go to Q5, which is a final state. And you've, 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 uh, you've hit a, a final state. So that means that your string BBA is going to be accepted. So this guy is also going to be accepted. Now the natural question is, again, given the same uh, Turing machine M, what is the language that is accepted by the following Turing machine? Okay. Well, we can start with the, with the easier uh, sort, of, sort of path. We know that uh, if you're in Q0, so if you're in Q0 and you see an A, you have to go to Q1. So suppose you have W, A, and then if you have any number of Bs, so if you have any number of Bs, B star, then any string that looks like this, so L of A, B star, is going to be, uh, is going to be part of L of M, okay? So let's just, to make that super, super sort of crystal, crystal clear, let's take, for example, AB. So you're in Q0 and you read AB. Then you move to uh, Q1. You leave an A behind. Now you're in Q1. You read a B and you stay in Q1. So now you're in Q1, but now you have a blank to the right of you. So now that you have a blank to the right of you, you're going to use this transition. And you're going to leave a blank to your left and you're going to end up in Q5, which is a uh, final state, okay? And then for any number, so it doesn't matter how many Bs you have, you could also have zero. For any number of Bs you have, that uh, kind of uh, pattern is going to be accepted by your machine M, okay? The second, the second part of the strings accepted by M is going to be if you go through this kind of uh, path. So you know that you're going to have to start with a B, so uh, another, another part of the language accepted by uh, M is you're going to start with a B. Then you can read any number of Bs, read any number of Bs. And then you wanna get to a final state, so you need to see an A at some point. But you need to see an A, okay? But now what's going to be surprising is some of you are going to think that you're, you're done and, and this is in fact the end of the, the strings accepted by that kind of path in your Turing machine. But in fact, once you see an A, once you see an A, so now suppose you have something like, uh, you start at Q0, you see a B, a B, an A. Then we know that this is going to give you um, 
what is that going to give you? It's going to, you're going to see two Bs, you're going to go to the right, then C and A, and then you're going to end up in, um, you're going to end up in Q5 and see a blank. But what you need to remember about the languages accepted by Turing machines is that it's all such strings, all such strings where you start in your initial ID, your initial configuration, and you end up in a final state, but you don't care. You have, you have sort of no reason to care about what's on the right and what's on the left of QF. So in fact, if there was, uh, instead of a blank here, there was more string. So for example, you had ABA, meaning that your string after BBA had ABA, then this would still be accepted. Okay. The same thing could be said if you had, for example, AB or, or, or A or B or AAA or ABB and, and so on. And so in fact, what this shows you is that any string that starts with B, any number of B and A is going to be accepted by your Turing machine. So that means that I can't close my bracket here. What I need to do is I also need to take into consideration strings that have stuff after this A. So that is, I have to take into consideration A plus B star. Okay. And so this is actually very different from uh, an FA or a PDA because remember in both cases, for an FA or PDA to accept a string, it needed to finish the input on the tape. But now because the data structure is the same, the data structure the Turing machine is using is the same as the, the input tape, they're essentially working together. Your Turing machine has no concept of finishing the input. So as long as you halt, as long as you halt, as long as you halt in a final state, it doesn't matter what uh, strings you have left to read and what strings you have read. If you halt in a final state, then you're going to accept your string, okay? Otherwise, so if you don't halt in a final state, so for example, you end up in an infinite loop or you just, for example, end up in Q4, then you're going to reject uh, that, that input string, okay? So this is a very important distinction to make between uh, turn machines and FAs and PDAs in how it accepts a, a string. Okay, so uh, you have the answer here. And so hopefully that, that's clear. So now that we've seen a, a couple of Turing machines, we've also seen some in, in the previous tutorial, uh, let's look at how we would sort of, how we would create Turing machines that uh, would accept languages. So we've already done a couple of these uh, already, but I thought it would be uh, good to look at a, a, a few more. So uh, the first one here is we want to design a Turing machine that accepts the language a n b two n c n for n greater than zero. So the idea here, the idea is suppose you have a string that you're going to accept a a uh, b uh, so b four c c then what you're going to do is you're going to start at your, you're going to start at the beginning of your string. And for each A, you're going to essentially replace that A with an X, for example. Then you're going to go to your Bs. Your Bs, you're going to place two Bs by uh, Ys, okay? Because now you want, for each uh, A, you want two Bs, right? So you're going to knock off two Bs with two Ys. Then you're going to go to your C's and you're going to knock off a Z. So you're going to knock off a C with a Z. And then you're just going to go all the way back to your, so you're going to see an X and then you're going to realize that uh, to the right of that X is the, the, next, uh, the next new A. So now you're going to be at this guy here. And then you're just going to repeat the process until you've gone to uh, x, x, y, 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 uh, z, z. So you're going to essentially go all the way back here and you're going to realize here that there are no more a's to read. So then you're going to check that all of the other 
symbols in your string are Y's and Z's. And then once you've done that, then you can stop here and uh, end in the final step. So that's the idea. And this is essentially uh, what we're going to do. So it's very similar to ANBN or ANB2N, but you just add an extra step with the C, okay? So you start in your initial state. You're going to, uh, you're going to want to read an A because if, otherwise if you don't read an A, already this is not going to be part of uh, your, your language. So you read an A, you replace that with an X and you go to the right. Then for all the other A's, you essentially skip all the other A's. Okay, so let's say we're back to uh, this guy here, right? So we've crossed off my A with an X and now we're going to go through the A's and then look for my first B. So I'm going to go through the A's and then look for my first B. When I see the first B, I'm going to replace it with a Y and then go to the right. So now I've replaced this guy with a Y and I'm, I'm now here, okay? So I wanna see another B, so I see another B and I replace that guy with a Y and I go to the right, okay? So I replace this B with a Y and I go to the right, so now I'm here. So now I wanna skip through all of the Bs, so I'm going to skip through all of the Bs, go to the right, and I wanna look for the first C. So I'm going to look for the first uh, C. So when I see that first C, I see that first C, I'm going to replace it with a Z. But now instead of going to the right, I wanna go all the way back and restart the process. So I'm going to um, replace my C with a Z and now start going uh, back, back all the way here, okay? So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I see a C, I replace it with a Z and I go to the left. Now this is going to be the guy that's going to allow me to go all the way back. So. Um, I'm going to go through, I'm going to go through all the B's which are to the left of uh, the C. Then I'm going to go through all the Y's. Then I'm going to go through all of the uh, A's. Okay. And finally, when I go through all the A's, I'm going to end up back here and I'm going to see an X. Once I see an X, I know that I can go back to the right and start the process again. So I'm going to, uh, when I see an X, I'm going to uh, not touch the X because I, I, don't, wanna, I don't wanna change uh, the X for an A again because that would sort of uh, give you a sort of erroneous kind of, kind of process. So I, I, replace the a with a, with, I replace the X with an X and go to the right. And then what I should see next is either an A or a Y if the string was A, uh, B2, uh, C. But now suppose that you had in fact uh, A2 before um, C2. So now what's happening is uh, now you see this A again. So you're going to again replace it with an X. So that's this transition, you don't have to do anything. But now because you don't have any more uh, A's here, or because there could be A's here, but then there's going to be Y's, this loop here is going to also give itself, uh, it is also going to have to go through all of the Y's. So you're going to go through all the A's, but then you're also going to go through all of the Y's. So that's why there's a Y, Y, uh, and then go to the right. Then uh, once you go through all of those Y's, you should see another B. And so you're going to replace that B uh, with a Y and go to the right. And then again, so this is going to be a Y. Again, you're going to do the same thing. Replace, so now you're here, you're going to replace that B with a Y and go to the right. So you're going to, so now you're going to be here, okay. So now it, there could have been more Bs here, there aren't, uh, but if there were, you would sort of go through them. But now what you also need to go through are the Zs, okay. Uh, so you have to add, to this uh, state, the transition Z, uh, ZR, okay? And then you would go through all the Zs and then you would end up, you would end up, so you would see your, so this was, a, this was knocked off. Then you'd see the next C, you would knock it off with a Z and then you would need to go all the way back, okay? But to go all the way back, 
you do need to go through the A's, the Y's, the B's, but you also need to go through the Z's, okay? Because you're going to be here, so you also need to go through this Z and then these Y's. Uh, there could be more B's here, so there could be B's here and then Y's and then A's here. And then uh, if you see an X, you would start over. So to this transition, to this state, you need to add this transition, okay? But now suppose that you had A2 uh, before C2. So now this is what's happened. You have X square, Y4, Z square. And now this is going to allow you to see the first X. And now you're going to be here. But if instead of seeing an A, you see a Y. So instead of seeing an A, you see a Y, you're going to go to the right. And now you're going to make sure that you haven't missed any Bs. So you're going to go through all of the, the Ys. So essentially you want to check if there isn't a dangling, a dangling B somewhere, okay? So to, to check that, you're going to go through all the Ys. And then what should happen is that you should then uh, go through all the Zs. So you should see a Z, go to the right. Then you should go through all the Zs because again, you want to make sure there isn't a dangling C here. And then you should end up at the end here and, and see a blank. And once you see that blank, replace it with a blank and go to the left. And then would be your final uh, state. Okay, so that's how you would create a, uh, a, a transition diagram or a Turing machine that would accept AN, B2, and CN. So again, it's quite similar to AN, B2N, the, the same kind of uh, idea. So uh, another example here is we have uh, the string, um, the language that contains the strings WCW, where uh, W is uh, any is over the alphabet AB. And so essentially you have the copy of W twice and in between you have a symbol C, okay? So you wanna design a Turing machine that recognizes all such, um, all such strings, okay? So how are we going to do this? Well, the idea is going to be uh, the following. So suppose you do have a string that looks like, that is an L. So suppose you have A, B, B, C, uh, A, B, B. And you're going to start at, um, uh, at your sort of beginning of your string. What you're going to do is for every symbol you see at the beginning, you're going to knock it off. Say that you, you've seen it with an X. Then you're going to go uh, to the second half of your string, so to the half after your C, and you're going to check that uh, immediately after the C, in this case, there is an A. So you check that there is an A, and you're going to knock it off with an X as well. Then you're going to go back, and then uh, to see the new beginning of the string, you essentially need to check uh, for the, the, the last X that was written. So you see an X that was written, you can go back and now you see a B. So you see a B, again, you can knock it off with an X. You go uh, through your, the rest of your string, through the C, through the X's. And then when, when you finish the X's, what you should see, because you want the same string to the left and the right, you should see a B. So you should see a B and you should cross that off. And again, uh, you should then go back, go through the X's, go through the C, go through the strings then see the first X. So you see the first X, you go to the right, and then you see another symbol. And then you do the same thing where for each, so for example, for each B, you would have to go back and check that there's a B. Or if, for example, this was an A, you would uh, see that A, or check it off, and then go uh, here, so go uh, here to check that it was the corresponding same symbol, okay? So how are we going to do that? Well, we essentially need to use, in this case, cases. Okay, so we're going to use cases in the uh, Turing machine. So let me use the same input string. So uh, you can be, you're in, your, you're in your initial state Q0. Two things can happen. Either you can see an A or a B. So in this case, I, I see an A, but I'm going to also make the transition for B. So the idea is the same. You see an A, you would replace that with an X and then you would go to the right. So then the idea would be the same if you saw a B, you would go, uh, you'd replace that with an X and go to the right, okay? I'm not gonna do the rest of this uh, at the same time because I, I might confuse you. 
So now suppose that you, you just started here. Okay, so you saw an X, you saw an A, you replaced that with an X, and you went to the right. Now I want to go through the rest of my string. So the rest of my string is any A's or B's. So I'm going to go through any A's and then any B's. And then at some point I should see a C. So I, sh I should see a C and I'll replace that with a C and go to the right. Okay. And then uh, what's going to happen is immediately after the C, I'm going to see an A. So now I'm going to see an A, going to see an A. And, and uh, I should, so it shouldn't be A or B. It should definitely be A because you want to match uh, for each A, you want to match another A. So you're going to replace that A with an, with an X. And now you're going to go to the left to essentially, you're going to, so you cross this A off with an X, you went through the, the Bs, through the C, and now you cross this guy off. So now you're going to go back to the left and start the, the process again. So, um, you're going to go to a new state. You're going to now go through, uh, so you're going to go through your C. So you're going to go through your, your, your C. So there's a reason why I, I made a transition like this instead of a loop. You'll see why in a second. So I go through my C, then I should see a bunch of A's and then a bunch of B's because now it's the sort of second half of my, uh, of my string. So I'm going to go through all of the A's and go left and all of the B's and go left. Okay. And then uh, I should restart the process once I see an X. So once I see an X, once I see an X, I replace that with an X and I go to the right. So now I again have two choices. So now I'm back to Q0. Again, I have two choices. I can either see an A or a B. So now I do see a B, I'm going to cross it off with an X and go to the right. So now there's an X here, um, there's an X here. Now I'm going to go through the rest of the, the symbols on the left of C. So essentially the same as this transition, I'm going to go through all the A's and then all the B's, okay? And then what should happen is then I should see a C. So it, you can kind of see it's parallel to, parallel to this branch. So you should see a C and then go to the right. But then here, what's, what's, what's missing here and also here actually is now that you've written the first X to the right of C, you have to go through all the X's here. So because now you've seen the C, uh, you've seen a C and you're going to go to the right, but now there's an X. So you're going to want to go through all of the X's and find the next uh, real symbol. So you're going to go through all of the X's uh, and go to the right. And then you want to find the corresponding. So the same thing is going to happen here. You want to add this transition. And uh, the same thing where you see an A, you need to see a corresponding A. The same thing here, you see a B, then what you should see uh, here is you should see a, a B and you should place that with X and go to the left. But now you go to the left and then, uh, Essentially, what you can do is you can just link this to this guy here because it's going to take care of uh, going back for both when you see an A and when you see a B. So you're essentially going to save some space. But now uh, there is an important transition missing here. And that's, um, so now what, what's happened so far, to make this a bit clear, um, I've knocked off an A with an X. Then I went through, I went through here, saw C, knocked off an A with an X. Then I went back, knocked off a B with an X. And then went forward, went through this, this C, this X. Then I saw a B, I replaced that with an X. But now, now that I'm here and I went to the left, I need to go through all of my X's. So that's going to be actually, that's going to be this uh, corresponding uh, transition. Okay. So now suppose you do that a bunch of times. So you do that a bunch of times. And now what, what happens is, um, so you had A, B, uh, A, B, B, C, uh, A, B, B. So uh, you replace the A, you replace the A with an X, plus this A with an X, and then you did this kind of process. So now you're here, 
you've ticked off the last corresponding uh, a v with an x. Now you're going to go all the way back through this x, so through this guy. You're going to go, you're going to see a c, right? You're going to go to the left. You don't have to go through any of these a's anymore, so you don't have to go through any of those a's anymore. So you're going to go uh, immediately to this transition. So wait, sorry. You, you, you are in C. So now you're going to go to the left. So you're going to go here. Uh, but this guy here is now an X. This guy here is now an X. So you're going to use this transition. You're going to go back to the right. And now you're in Q0. But instead of seeing an A or a B, you saw a C. So you saw a C. That means that you have to add a, a new kind of uh, a new kind of case where you see a C. You can replace that with a C and go to the right. So now you know to the left of C, I have a bunch of X's. The only thing I need to check now is that there isn't a dangling, uh, a dangling uh, a symbol uh, to the right of this guy. So there is an extra A or a B. And to do that, I can essentially just go through all my X's. And then uh, what, I sh what should happen is if there isn't a dangling uh, A or B at the right, then I should see a blank. So I should then see a blank, replace that with a blank, and then it doesn't really matter, let's say I go to the left, and then end up in a final state. And then this is going to accept any string that looks like this. And notice here, uh, you, the language does contain C. So in other words, it contains lambda, C, lambda. And uh, that works here because if you're in Q0, and you already see a C, then you would go through here. You wouldn't see any X's, you, you would see a blank, and you would go to your final state. So this is a Turing machine that would accept uh, the language uh, WCW, where W is over the alphabet AB. Okay, so that's it for uh, uh, creating Turing machines that accept languages. The next uh, part of the tutorial is about creating Turing machines that uh, compute functions. Okay, so as I was saying, um, the other topic of uh, this tutorial is using Turing machines to compute uh, functions. So what do I mean by that? Well, uh, suppose you have a Turing machine uh, M and you're given an input uh, W. Then the Turing machine computes the, the function F of W uh, if for every W in the domain of that function, when W goes through the Turing machine, so uh, this isn't maybe as representative as it should be. Suppose W is, is, a, is a string of zeros, ones, A's, B's, or whatever. Um, so the, the Turing machine goes through a bunch of, uh, allows the, the, the string to go through a bunch of transitions. So it goes through a bunch of transitions. And then what should happen is your initial Q0 pointer is at the beginning of W. If your Turing machine computes the function f of w, then uh, what should happen is your pointer, uh, which will be on your final state, should be at the beginning of f of w. Okay, so for a a function to be uh, computed by a Turing machine, essentially for every input to w, so for every string in the domain of that function, if you start at q zero and uh, you see w as the input. Then with zero more steps, you should get the final state uh, and at its right f of w. So this is a more restrictive than accepting a, a string, uh, more restrictive than a Turing machine accepting a string because it requires that all of, uh, all of the output of the string, all of the output of the function is at the right of, your, um, of, your, of the pointer that corresponds to the final state. Okay, so um, uh, one example, well, a couple of examples to illustrate this. We have the, we want to create the following, the, the a Turing machine that computes the following function, uh, 3x uh, plus one, where we assume x is in uh, unary. So unary, uh, like binary or ternary or whatever, is a system of, uh, of a number representations. A, a, an integer x is in unary, if uh, x of one, so x sub one for in unary, if it corresponds to just a bunch of ones. So x equals to seven, 
would just be, uh, this is in decimal, x in unary would be um, seven ones, okay? Uh, and that allows the Turing machine to, to sort of easily uh, compute it. So uh, dealing with binary and ternary would be a bit more uh, advanced and sophisticated. So the idea here is uh, you're given your input x, uh, so you start at Q0, you have your input X, suppose you have three ones. So the output, if X is three, the output of F of X should be three times three plus one, so 10. So the idea is what you're going to do is you're going to replace every one here by a, a, uh, a place marker. So for example, you can use the dollar sign. So you're going to replace each one by the dollar sign. And then what you're going to do is for every dollar sign, because for each one, so for each one here, what is three times X? It says that for every one, you're going to add an extra two, an extra two ones. So for example, if you have three ones, then for each of these ones, you're going to add a one, one. Okay, not 11, one, one in unary. So for each of these ones, you're going to add a one, one in unary. Okay, so that's what you're going to do. You're going to um, uh, replace all the ones with a dollar sign. And then for, for, e for every dollar sign, you're, you're going to add an extra two ones to the right. So you're going to go back and forward, replace the dollar sign by two ones, replace the dollar sign by uh, two ones. And then once you have your three times three, you're just going to append an extra one. Uh, whoa, this is messy. You're going to append an extra one so now you can get uh, three times three. Uh, so you're going to have this and you're going to append a one to get uh, three times three plus one, so 10. Okay, so what does this look like in, in kind of Turing machine uh, uh, format? So suppose I'm still dealing with one, one, one. So I'm going to start at Q0 and uh, for each one I see, I'm going to replace it with a dollar sign. I'm going to use that as my place marker. And I'm going to do that until I see a, a a, um, a blank at the right. So that's, that's why I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to go all the way to the right, replacing all of these by a dollar sign and ending here. Okay. So once I see a blank, once I see a blank, I'm going to go back. So I'm going to go back to the left. And what I should see is I should see a, a dollar sign. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take that dollar sign, uh, replace it by a one, so now I haven't added any ones yet. So that's, that's why I need to start adding ones. So now that I've replaced this by the dollar sign by uh, a one, so this is now one, I went to the right. So now I'm here. So now I'm going to replace two blanks by ones. So, so I can add two extra ones. So I'm going to replace this blank by one. So I'm going to say, uh, you see a blank, replace that with a one and go to the right. Okay. And then I'm going to see, so I'm going to be here. I'm going to see another blank. I'm going to replace that blank with another one. And now I want to sort of start the process over. So that's why I'm going to kind of uh, loop back. And it turns out that the loop back is going to be uh, here. So I'm going to see a blank. I'm going to, um, actually, I'm going to see a blank. Maybe I'm not, no, okay, I am right. Okay, so you're going to see a blank and uh, you want to replace that with one and go to the left. So um, you're going to say, well, uh, at this point here, if you're at this state, uh, because you've gone to the left, you're back here. You're back uh, here. If you're in here, after doing this transition, you're back here. So what you need to do now is, because you have a bunch of ones, you have to go back, go back through all your ones and see your first dollar sign. You know that the first dollar sign you're going to see is going to use this transition. So all you need to do is, add a you see a one replace that with a one and go to the left a bunch of times so just to make that a bit uh, clear uh, you started with uh, three ones now with a bunch of steps you you got you got uh, three dollar signs and now you were here so i'm just going to use q because i haven't labeled anything so now um sorry so now you're here uh, this state corresponds to seeing a dollar sign uh, on your input tape because here remember you saw a blank and you went to the left So now you replace that uh, dollar sign with a one 
So you replace that and a dollar sign with a one. Now you're going to see those two blanks and you're going to replace those with ones. So with uh, a couple of number of steps, you're going to um, essentially have, actually, let me forget the ID representation for a second. You're going to have uh, three dollar signs and then one, one, one. You're going to end up here. So you're going to go back. And uh, once you see a dollar sign, you're going to replace it by one and go back here. So that's what you're going to do. You, you, you see a bunch of ones, you go back, you see the dollar sign, you replace it with a one. But now what, what's happened is you don't automatically have a blank. So what you're going to need to do, you're going to need to go through all your ones until you see a blank again. So that's why here I'm going to add an additional transition. Okay, so now when are you done this process? Well, you're done this process when uh, all of the dollar signs have replaced have been replaced by one. So this got replaced by one, you added two ones. This got replaced by one, you added two ones. This got replaced by one and you added uh, two ones. So now you're here, you're here. So what you're going to do now is you're going to go essentially, um, well, now that you're here, what this guy is telling you, oh, it looks like I've made a mistake. Okay, why did I make a mistake? Um, you see a blank, got replaced by one. Okay, because in my notes, I have that the left here should be a right. Um, no, I think that makes sense, no? Because you, okay, so let me just check that what I did makes sense so far. Uh, so you have three ones. Uh, oh, there, yeah, I erased this. So this, 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 now I see a blank and I go to the left, now I'm here. I replace that dollar sign with a one and then I go to the right. So I replace that blank with a one. I replace the new blank with a one, now I'm here. Um, so then I need to go, yeah, no, it's left. It's definitely left, so I go left Okay, so I had a mistake in my notes. So I go left, uh, all the way back, and then I see a dollar sign. Uh, so, uh, what was this, right? So I, I, I replace the dollar sign with a one, I add two ones, I go back here, I place the one with a dollar sign, the dollar sign with a one, I go here, add two ones. Uh, now that I'm here, so I, I, I've replaced this blank with a one and I'm here, I'm going all the way back, according to this guy, all the way back. Oh, I see, okay. So then I'm going to hit a blank here. So now I'm going to hit a blank, okay? Uh, because remember, I wanna add an extra one at the end. I'm going to use this opportunity to add an extra one and go to the left. So now what's happened is I've replaced this guy with a one and now I, I'm here. So all I need to do now is make myself make my pointer uh, end in the final state where the pointer is pointing at the beginning of the function. So that would be here. So all I need to do now is, I know I just replaced the, I, I went to the left. So now I see, a, I, I should see a blank. So now I'm going to see that blank, replace it with a blank and go to the right. So now it should be here and I should replace that with uh, a final state. Okay, so, um, Oh, I see. So in the solutions, it looks like, uh, wait a minute. Okay, so I think there might be a mistake in the solutions as well. Oh, I see, because here she puts, uh, here uh, the one is at uh, the end. For my kind of easiness of use, I, I made the one be at the beginning. But it doesn't really change anything. Okay. So, um, okay, so hopefully that's clear. So the last exercise of this tutorial is we want to design a Turing machine that computes a function. Uh, you're given a string w over zero one. And what happens is you um, add a zero in between a w and uh, its reversal. Okay, so for, so for example, if you're given um, 
the input, uh, I don't know, one, zero, one, then what should happen at the end is you should get a final state and you should see one, zero, one, then this zero here, and then the reverse, in this case, one, zero, one happens to be a palindrome, so you would get one, zero, one, but it does not necessarily have to be one. Okay, so um, this one's actually probably the, the hardest, the most complicated one uh, in the whole tutorial. Um, but if you understood the WCW, it's kind of the same idea. Um, so let me just actually show you what the idea is. Uh, the first thing you're going to do, so you start with your, so you at Q0, you start with your string W. You're going to go all the way to the end of your string. And because you know there should be a zero, okay, uh, you're not going to add the zero immediately because it's going to be hard to distinguish between the one zeros in the strings and the zero in the middle. What you're going to do is you're going to add a place marker Z, which is going to be the, uh, the, the middle zero that you're going to use. So uh, you're going to add a, a Z there. And then what you're going to do is you're going to look at the left of Z. If, for example, it's a zero. So remember, you're reversing the string. So the last symbol should be the first symbol of the reverse. So you're going to take the last symbol of your string. You're going to copy it. And you're going to, because uh, you want to remember that you copied it, you're going to say that you copied uh, a zero by marking in an X. Um, and you're going to place it here. And then again, you're going to do the same thing. Suppose the, the one after that was a one. So we're going to go back here. You're going to copy this one, but now you want to show that this was a one when you copied it. So we're going to use a Y. The Y is going to be the ones, the X is for the zeros. And then you're going to paste it uh, here. Okay. And then you're essentially going to repeat the same process, marking uh, Y's, one for Y's and zero for X's up until you have something like, I don't know, x, y, uh, x, x, uh, y, a zero. And so what should be uh, the, the string on the right? Well, a y is a one, so you should have one. And then x's are zero, so you should have zero, zero, uh, one, uh, zero. Okay, so now you're going to be here, but now you want a w to be in a one, zero. So this guy here, now that you know that there's a mapping between x and, and x, y, and, and uh, 0, 1, respectively. So you know that x is 0, y is a 1, and z is 0. You're going to go all the way back, and you're going to replace the z with a 0. All the y's are going to be replaced by 1's, and all the x's are going to be replaced by a 0. So that's the idea of the Turing machine, right? So um, all we need to do now is kind of implement it. So, uh, oh, OK. So how do we do that? Again. Always the easiest thing to do to get started is always put an initial state, then ideas come to you. Okay. So remember what I need to do, I, I need to bring my I need to bring my pointer all the way to the end. So I do that by staying in my initial state uh, and uh, read writing zeros and uh, read writing uh, ones uh, respectively. So then I know I'm at the end of my string if I see a blank. So I see a blank. That blank is going to be, so suppose I have 0, 1, 1, so 0, 1, 1, okay? And so now I, I went through my string, now I have a blank. This blank is going to act as this 0 in the middle, so I'm going to replace it with a Z. So then I know that uh, it's going to tell me where my middle is, and after, that, after I'm done, I'm going to replace the Z with a 0. So I see a blank, I replace it with a Z, and I go... Uh, well, I'm going to go to the left because now I'm going to start copy pasting. Okay, so um, the idea is similar to WCW. Uh, you see a one. If you see a one, then it's going to be one branch. So you're going to see a one. Uh, you're going to replace it by uh, an X. And now you're going to go to the right. Uh, then uh, you should be in, uh, in the Z. So you should be in a Z, you're going to go through your Z. You're going to go through your Z. And then you should be here, you should see a blank. So you're going to replace the blank uh, with a one and because you saw a one. And then you're going to go to the left. Um, and so 
you're going to go to the left and now you're going to essentially repeat the process. So now there's a one here. This is now an X. This is now an X. Okay. Um, so you're going to go um, back. And so what could happen is you could go through some zeros and you could also go through some ones. So you're going to go back. So I, I'm of course missing some stuff here, but I, I do it on purpose not to put them. So uh, we can sort of do it together. Uh, then at some point, once I'm done reading the zeros and the ones, I should see a Z. So once I see a Z, I go to the left. Then what should happen is because uh, the, the stuff closest to the Z should now be X's and Y's, I'm going to go through X's uh, and uh, Y's to the left. And now uh, this, this is going to be slightly different from, um, from what we did uh, in uh, WCW, because now if you see a one, uh, you don't want to sort of, you could say you see a, you see a one uh, and then you replace it with a one and then you kind of uh, go to the left and go to the right, replace that one with an X. But that's a bit sort of, essentially what you want to do is immediately when you see that one, you're going to replace it with an X. And you already know what happens when you see a, a one and replace it with an X. You go to the right, and it's essentially the same thing as this guy. You're going to go to this state, okay? And then once you're here, um, you replace the one with an X. So now you're going to go through a bunch of X's and a bunch of Y's because those were the ones that got copy pasted. Then at some point you're going to see a Z. Uh, then you're going to go through the copied uh, uh, symbols, the zeros and the ones, okay? Um, then at some point you're going to see a blank and you're going to start over, right? And the same idea uh, happens or occurs if instead of seeing a one uh, at the beginning, for example, you see a, a zero. So if you see a zero, you replace that with an X. So I'm actually just going to copy paste what I did here, except that the blank one is going to be blank zero. So I'm going to loop through all of the uh, marked X's and Y's that were copied. Then I'm going to go through um, the Z. Then I'm going to go through the copied uh, zeros and the copied ones. So I'm not, I'm not touching them because they're already copied. Uh, and then at some point I'm going to see a blank. So I'm going to see a blank. And I'm going to, because, um, oh, that's unfortunate. Here I used one was X. Okay, so, so I can't use the same symbol. Um, okay, so here I mixed up the, the symbols here. I said one was going to be Y, but now one is X. So no big deal. Uh, it's essentially just the same idea, but now I, I just need to say, if I see a zero, I, I put a Y. So that's why I replaced this with a Y. Um, so yeah, if, if I'm here, I've seen a blank, so now I want to paste the zero. So I'm going to replace the blank with a zero, and now I'm going to start going to the left. But now I know what I have to do when I start going to the left. I have to go through all the zeros and the ones, see a Z, and then go through all the X's and the Y's, and then make a new decision here, okay? So this is essentially the new decision uh, guide or state. Uh, so instead of essentially copying uh, the, copying this, okay. I'm uh, just going to make this go all the way back here, okay? So then it's going to go through all the Z, copy zero ones, back through the Z, uh, back through the, uh, the marked X and Ys, and then uh, it could see a one and then go through this loop again, or instead it could see a zero, and then if it sees a zero, it essentially takes the same path as if you initially saw a zero. So you replace it with a Y and then go to the right. But of course I'm not done because if I said I'm done here, then I would run into an infinite loop. Um, so what I need to do is I need a stopping criteria. And the stopping criteria is actually going to be uh, in this guy here, in this state. Because, uh, at some point, so uh, what was my example? Zero, one, one. Um, yeah, it's just zero, one, one. So this became zero, one, one, Z. And then, uh, so I replaced the one with, a, with an X, right? So X, then one to the right, then another X, one to the right, 
n is zero, I replace a zero with a y, n is zero to the right. So now um, I saw a zero, now I'm going to loop back here and go to the left. So I'm going to loop back here, uh, go through the z here, go through the z, well that's not an arrow, go through the z, and then go through this x and y, go through these x's and y. But I finished, I finished my computation, so now there's only going to be x's and y's. I'm never going to have a one or a zero because I, I'm done copy pasting. So now uh, what's happened is, is I'm going to run into a blank and that blank is going to tell me that I finished copy pasting. So I'm going to see a blank. And uh, so I'm not gonna move, change that for a blank because I don't need to add anything. I'm just going to replace that with a blank and go to the right. And now what I'm going to do, now that I, I went to the right with my blank, now I'm here. For each y I see, I'm going to replace it with a, with a zero. And for each x I see, I'm going to replace it with a one. And uh, what else? Uh, for every, if I see, uh, well, okay. So I'm going to go through that process. I'm only going to see one z. So I'm only going to see one Z, so I can automatically replace that with a zero, go to the left. So now I'm going to be here, but now keep in mind that I've converted the Y's and the X's to uh, zeros and ones respectively. So now I have, uh, what do I have? I have zero, one, one, and now I'm here. So I'm going to go through the ones and zeros because what I want to do now is I want to end here. So I'm going to go back through the zeros and the ones, okay? And then at some point, um, I'm going to see a blank, okay? And then, because I want to end at the beginning of the function, I'm going to read that blank, uh, replace it with a, with a uh, sorry, not replace it with a, a right, <laughs> replace it with a blank, so not do anything, and then end uh, here. Uh, so go to the right and end there. And so that means that what's going to happen is I'm always going to, uh, whoops, so I'm always going to have zero, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, and I'm going to end here. So this gives you a successful uh, computation of uh, this function here. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Uh, again, thank you so much guys for, um, for uh, tuning in and for um, asking questions. Uh, it, it has been uh, a pleasure uh, being uh, your, your TA. And uh, uh, perhaps we'll, we'll see each other in, in a course or in a course that I'm taking or in a course that I'm uh, teaching uh, again. Um, so, so, so best of luck, good luck in, um, in your final, good luck in, well, good luck in your assignment, first of all, which uh, we'll be marking. Um, good luck in your, your final and good luck in, um, in your future. All right, take care everyone.